In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Google Slides uh, for creating digital manipulatives. Now, I provide three different examples, one in math, one in science, and then one as a game board. But honestly, there are so many more ways out there that you can use it. It's basically going to be your creativity and your needs that are going to help propel um, you to create the different uh, digital manipulatives. Um, so I really think that you, this will be a very valuable um, useful tool for you and and uh, I'm really kind of excited to see uh, what some of you create when you submit your final project. For this video I want to show you some examples of how slides can be used for digital manipulatives. Uh, I personally feel that this is kind of an unlimited category. Yeah, a lot of this can be based off of your creativity and, and kind of what your needs are. Now once again I went through and, and created a lot of it uh, but I'll walk you through the important parts here so you can see how I've done this. In my first slide, I'm going to start with math, and I put some very simple addition problems up here. And I started this by just putting in a table. I then created my background by using a color, and then simple text box here. Now, here's where some of the magic of slides works. Then over on the side here um, is an area that doesn't show up in presentation, but it's great for putting objects to drag and for instructions and things. So I have my instructions over here, which is a simple text box. I have my numbers over here that students would be able to click on. And what they would be able to do then is drag that number. But what's really cool is you see that there's still a number two there. Well, the reason is I've created what's kind of called an infinite pile, and I want to show you how to be able to do that. I'm going to go over to my zero, and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this by going Control D, and I think I've got enough now. I'm now going to click off, and I want to click into an area around and drag, and you can see all the blue boxes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to arrange them into a nice pile so they look like they're all as one. So when I hit Arrange, I'm going to hit Align and Center, and you can see how it's changed. I'm going to go one more time with Arrange, Align, and go Middle, and now it looks as if I have one pile. I'm going to go ahead and drag these in. I'll have to play a little bit to get them centered here. And that looks pretty good. So now I have all the numbers I need for the students to be able to solve these problems. And of course, you could do a, a variety of math problems. The next one is science. Now on this one, from my background, I actually put an image in. So that way when students are dragging, they can't move the image itself. Once again, my instructions are on the side. And then I've created a text box. And what I've done in my text box is I've done a highlight so that it stands out a little bit more. Now when I created these, I did the first, and then I just did a, a duplicate, a control D, to make things a lot easier. Students then will be able to drag these onto um, their presentation then, wherever they think the correct answer is. Now one little trick is make sure they see the crosshairs, because if they don't see the crosshairs, it's not going to move properly. I've also told them that they may need to duplicate some of them, so they'll use the skill as well uh, to be able to complete this. And then a third one that we have is I've created uh, just a very simple game board. And what I did is I started with one square, and I duplicated it. I changed the background colors, and then I lined them up. Now, I could have used that same grouping feature that I did on the first slide with math if I wanted to, um, to create a nice long line. And then I could have duplicated that. Uh, but I just went through and put each one individually. I put a text box in. I duplicated the text box. And you can see that I've created my game board. I did add a link so that there's a spinner. And if you click on that, it's going to take them to a spinner that they can use for the game. Now, one thing I do want to show is the pawns. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this pawn, except I don't want both of them to be the same color because, of course, students aren't going to know what's what. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my format options, and I'm going to go into the colors. And so now I'm going to change my pawn to blue. So I X out, and now you can see I kind of have a grayish and a blackish pawn. And just for fun, let's do it one more time. We're going to hit Control D just to make sure that it's the right size. Format options, I'm going to come into my coloration, and this time I'm going to go ahead and go with a goldish color. So now I have three pawns set. 
students will be able to drag them on. If you're using this for reviewer things, you could throw questions with it. I, it it's really your creativity. But the whole idea is being able to drag uh, the manipulatives um, to make it very much engaging and interactive for your students.